Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from the shores of Waikiki Beach. I'm right next to the Catholic Church, if you're familiar with uh, Waikiki. The St. Augustine's Catholic Church is right next to me. In fact, if I look down, there is a, the altar is probably right there beneath me. So it's so cool to be right here juxtaposed between um, the ocean, the beach, the Catholic Church, and uh, Starbucks, very essential part of my wife and I's life. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine, roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today we're going to go deep here in a few moments with Dr. Thomas Williams, his new book, The Coming Christian Persecution. It's already here. It's at our doorstep. Our last guest, and a friend of mine, Mark Hauk, who, as you probably know, was arrested at uh, in in the dark in the early morning hours, uh, while his wife and his 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 six children, uh, or maybe it's seven children now I forget, were were asleep in the room. Over twenty FBI uh, agents, armed agents, surrounded his house with guns drawn and arrested him uh, when he uh, uh, for his uh, for an incident that took, took place at Planned Parenthood, of which he was he was subsequently acquitted. But things are getting pretty gnarly uh, uh, here these days. I, I, Ace Bagley, who's a friend of mine, he's he's the president, the national president for Nights on Bikes. I believe there's over 4,000 members. We ride with him on our TV show, Long Ride Home, on occasion. He's a cast member of our show. Um, a couple of years ago, he was asked by a priest. He got a call from a priest up in Canada. He lives up in, in the northern part of the United States. And he said, we've got a problem here in Canada. Uh, our church... We have to share it with uh, uh, a Muslim community here, and uh, and uh, they'll come into our church while we're having mass, and they'll stand up and film uh, so that they can catch us if we say anything against uh, the Muslim religion. Well, obviously, these are Islamic, you know, fundamentalists. Not not like all of our Muslim brothers uh, out there in the world, but but uh so he asked, so he was just saying depressed he says i just think i'm gonna, just gonna quit so ace and about 30 of his bikers rode up there to canada and they went into the mass and there uh, as they entered the room they saw a whole row of these um I islamic fundamentalists uh, uh sitting there and when mass started they all stood up and uh ace uh, and and blocked uh the view and Ace uh, reached forward and put his hands on one of their shoulders and said, "Excuse me, brother, but this is a sacred place of worship. We would appreciate if you would, you know, sit with sit as we sit." And they, he, and the others looked around behind them and they saw thirty vested bikers <laughs> behind them, and they all decided they would just get up and leave. Uh, but I, I am proud of Ace, and I'm proud of I'm proud of the people like Mark Hawk who are standing up for their faith. We need to stand up for the Lord and stand for the Lord. It's time to be stand, to stand up and be counted. Things are things are adrift mm -hmm. and uh, and we are aware of it and we need to we need to take care of it. We need to make our make uh, a stand for Jesus. That's why I love our guest Dr. Thomas Williams. His book is called The Coming Christian Persecution, but his subtitle why things are getting worse and then even more importantly how to pre prepare for what's to come. Dr. Williams, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Bear, it is, it is such a pleasure of uh, being on your show today. It's a very sobering <clears throat> topic that we're discussing, but a very, very important one, one very much in line with this call to Christian manliness. No, thank you. Yeah, that's true. It, it's true. You know, and we see yeah. you uh, suffering for Jesus there in, in Rome. <laughs> uh, what did you have for uh, for dinner last night? May I ask? <laughs> All right, veal cutlets, <laughs> asparagus, grilled oh, asparagus. Oh my goodness! That's fine. Oh, yeah. and I bet you had the greatest coffee this morning too, didn't you? 
That is without a doubt. Except, as you say, your wife might not have thought so. I thought so. I yeah. love espresso. So oh, I we love we love Rome. I just I just feel so. And you know, it, anyway, let's get let's not get off track. But how did you find yourself uh, in Rome? What is your history? I know as your in your um, your journey with the Lord. Give us a little bit so of your I background. Came, I, I came to Rome a long, long, long time ago in 1991, more than half my life ago. So that was uh, about the time Romulus showed up, wasn't it? Yeah, that's a long time <laughs> exactly, ago. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, I used to hang out at the coffee bar with Romulus and Remus. We would just kind of, you know, tell stories. No, but <laughs> 91, I came as a uh, as a seminarian. I was sent here to, to on my studies. I was uh, studying for the priesthood at the time and really fell in love with Rome. And uh, so I was already I was already engaged with my Christian faith and great engaged very much, but not aware of this uh, global Catholicism and really where where I fit into that big picture. And since then, I've really made my home here. I live here oh. with my wife and our kids. And uh, and it's just a great place to call home. And I I'm not one of those disaffected uh, expats who, who who is embittered with his with his country of america i love america get back every time i get the chance um and will always love my country but I'm very happy to be living here in rome it's a good pace of life for me and allows me to do a lot of uh, a lot of good work for the lord here oh i just i just love every moment there you know you and everyone there is such good shape because you walk those hills you know you're walking everywhere and it's just so beautiful but so so your what was your course of study that brought you there uh, you know what what is that what has that journey been so i was with uh, the legionaries of christ at the time and they did all their philosophy and theology studies in rome um so i had studied economics before and then i'd studied philosophy and theology and then Eventually, when in, I, I'm teaching now, I teach uh, theology at St. John's University. They have a Rome campus. And I also work for Breitbart News as their Rome bureau chief. I do a lot of reporting. And it's really that that got me very much engaged with the question of Christian persecution, because though, over the last six, seven years, uh, that's been kind of my bread and butter, following Christian persecution around the world where it's been happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and it's really been something that's kind of overwhelming to me to see the magnitude of the problem and something that we're so often unaware of because mainstream media simply doesn't cover it. We don't know how serious the problem is. Uh, and that's, you know, that's part of what motivated me to write the book, really wanting to to fill that gap, let people know how serious this is. Yeah, I was speaking at a men's conference. Uh, I forget which one. I think it was the one in Wor Worcester, Mass. and Sophia Institute. Uh, this is a, this is crisis. It's by a part of Sof Sophia, isn't it? That's and right. I, and yeah. I went I went by their table just to see what books they had because I thought I could who I might want to interview. This book just jumped out of this all these volumes of books that they had surrounding them, and uh, it, it's so it's so necessary, so urgent to have this conversation because you know we we don't hear about it. It's the great onset persecution. It's the hidden persecution that we need to first of all become aware of so that we can you know get ready to respond to that i mean like for example what what would you say are the worst uh, hot spots right i mean we think america there's 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 persecution here sort of a white persecution but what what are the hot spots for pe persecution the basic and the basic reasons like is it religion is it atheism what are the hot spots around the countries that are well it's 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 depending on where you go different drivers of persecution kind of take the take the helm so if you're talking about a place like North Korea or China, it's atheistic communism that sees Christianity really as the greatest threat to the allegiance that they expect from all their citizens. They want to be number one. They want to have the total allegiance of their citizens. And Christianity obviously does not permit that. We have a higher purpose. We have a higher God. And the state will always come below that. And that's something that atheistic communism can never abide. And so there's this effort to control and to suppress and to and to um, surveil. I mean, the, the things that are going on now in these countries are, are, are horrific. Well, we're seeing that, uh, we're seeing that inching its way into our, our own, to, to the United States. I know, and, and unfortunately, it even, it mirrors what's going on in China. I mean, we're taking some of the worst things that are going on elsewhere in the world and starting to do them ourselves. Uh, you mentioned that earlier with the, the, the FBI. Uh, this is something the FBI, in, in many instances now, is becoming a tool for really uh, getting into trying to figure out what Christians are saying, what they're doing. Uh, there's a crackdown on the, on, the, on the Latin mass goers because they're probably linked with white supremacy. I mean, these absurd ideas that are coming out now, uh, this weaponization of our own government against, against Christians, and it's really something very, very disturbing. 
Yeah, it's 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 a wake up call for us. Uh, and we're going to get into this in a little while, what we can do about that. We're talking with Dr. Thomas Williams, his new book, The Coming Christian per- Persecution, subtitled Why Things Are Getting Worse and How to Prepare for What Is to Come. How can people uh, find your book, Dr. Williams, and how can they find you? Well, the best way to find the book is uh, Sophia Institute Press right on their website. It's also on Amazon and other places, of course. Um, with me, uh, www.thomasdwilliams.com has got this and other books that I've written. If any, And if anybody wants to follow me on Twitter, it's T.D. Williams Rome. T.D. Williams Rome. Don't you dig that? <laughs> it's just so cool. <laughs> do you know Joan from Rome, by the way? I do. Oh, I don't do. Don't you yeah, adore her? Really. Isn't she something? I love that woman. She is wonderful. She's an institution. She is an institution here. <laughs> yeah, she definitely is. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Dr. Thomas Williams, The Coming Christian Persecution. We'll be right back with more. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I neglected to do something that my bride, Cindy, told me I should do. She's, she suggests that we always start our radio show off with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. So I'll do that to start this, this, this segment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What a privilege to be here in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and talking with our guest, Dr. Thomas Williams, his book, The Coming Christian Persecution. I mean, that's kind of gnarly to me because I feel like it's already here, but it's, well, it's, it it's, it's and, growing. And, and, yeah, the threat no, is growing. Yeah. Yeah. The reason for the, for the title is not so much that we have to wait for it to come as it's getting worse rather than better in the sense that, yes, it's here. But what we're going to be seeing for the foreseeable future is is a worsening, unfortunately, and not a lightening of the problem. You know, it's a, it's just a sign of the times, though, right? I mean, and, and it's and it's not like we haven't, you know, it's kind of I, I, I grew up in the 60s when to be an American was to be a Christian, you know, and we lived by traditional Christian values. And uh, and so I, I, I was naive. Oh, this is the way it's always going to be. Uh, but historically, that's not the tr- that's not the case. Christians have always had to swim upstream. There's always been a count. Ca- ca- we've always been countercultural. Yeah, it, but it is very scary. I, I like you, you know, come from those decades, and you just assumed at least people appreciate whether they were Christian or not. They appreciated the Christianity of the founders, right. the Christian principles upon which the country was built. And now that is no longer the case. They're questioning the whole, the values of the founders. They're trying to change the date of the founding and to disassociate the country 
from its Christian roots, which are extremely important in what we believe in and what we value as as Americans. And it, I find it very disturbing. It, it's happening so very quickly. Just one example, yes. simple example. Uh, Obergefell, the, the, the Supreme Court decision that legalized gay marriage in the entire country happened in 2015. Now you will find basically that the entire country has accepted this as something which is good and right. Uh, except many Christians, of course, because it goes against biblical morality. It goes against, obviously, our Catholic teaching as well. But less than 10 years uh, has, has gone by, and people have completely changed in their understanding of what marriage is. But that's just one little, one little grain of sand in this, in this immense beach of, of problematic things that are changing well, so quickly. Isn't it interesting, though, how fortunate we are uh, for that Humanae Vitae came out when it did, right at that moment. It was so prophetic. Uh, at the moment of the pill and, and all of that that happened and then the, and the rise of abortion and John Paul's two's uh, writings on on basically the gospel of sex and you know on, on love and responsibility um, understanding you know our, I know now they're going down and they're tearing down statues of our founding fathers and I hope they don't try to change their genders you know it's it's getting <laughs> it's getting it's getting confusing out there uh, and it's so contrary to our basic you know our the Catholic Catechism, is largely based on Thomistic, you know, uh, philosophy, you know, and, and natural, nat understanding of natural law. Natural law, you know what that is? That's just common sense, you yeah. know, the, and so, so, but in, in the, in the, in this current, current world, people are saying, oh, we need to have transgender athletes run with women because we have to protect their rights. Well, what about the rights of the women that are getting run over, knocked, knocked unconscious by volleyballs and, and everything else? It's just, everything, it's just so interesting how everything gets turned upside down. And I heard someone once in a debate, a, a, a transgender person who thought of themselves as, as a woman stood up and said, you know, I'm a woman and you can't challenge that I'm a woman. And he goes, well, can you just do me a favor? Can you define for me what a woman is? And they can't anymore. That, that's how... The, it's like the feminist movement went so far that it fell off the edge, and, and there's not even anything, such a thing as a woman anymore. Anyway, we're not going to get off. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's just, I, it, it is it's terrible because it's, we've reached a point now where it's not only to live and let live and respect other people's even erroneous and silly choices. I mean, it, it used to be uh, back in the day, several decades ago, if there were transvestites, there were people who dressed up as members of the opposite sex, and you said, okay, that's weird. It's not for me, but you know. You don't hate the people, you right. don't chase them down, you just, but now it's not that. It's not about just live and let live and respect. It's about, you have to affirm me. You have to say something that you know is not true. You have to say, I am a woman. When you know in your heart of hearts and you know your brain tells you, I'm not a woman, you have to you have to say that. And I'm gonna oblige you to say that. I'm gonna chase you down until you say that. And you that. will lose your job, you'll be marginalized. And well, yeah, what's happening is like I have so many men that I know that at work, they're saying, hey, we need for you to be on the pride committee this year. Well, I can't do that. It's it's contrary to my my uh, religious beliefs. Well, they don't fire them, but they don't get promoted. And right. we have to be willing to accept that 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 type of white martyrdom, I guess, as it is called. I think you refer to that in your book. Um, that that there's you have to accept that you may be marginalized, that you that your career may be uh, uh, placed into a corner you might get derailed and and accept that with joy accept it with joy for be had the privilege of making a stand when mark was arrested he, he he was filled with god's grace and peace and the sense of joy that he had a chance to go to the cross so it's not we should not fear it we should embrace it uh, but uh, but we we need to, we need to be willing to stand up. You know what? It's so sad. At the cross, there were some women there. I think there was only one disciple, one man. I think it was John. Everyone else is hiding out. I don't want to be among those. I pray that I won't be among those that don't speak up. When people when the when the when the women walk by here, mostly women. It's so funny, um, and some men too. About and they and they're yelling out our body our rights or something like that and i and i and i yell back to them what about the rights of the baby of the girl in your womb you know um so twisted what do they call it selective outrage <laughs> and you never know so where it's going to you never know mm -hmm. where it's going to hit next uh and so we can't let the cancel culture 
cancel us. We have to stand. I'm getting on my own soapbox here, and I want to get deeper into what you you have to say. So we were, we were at, before we left, we were talking about the different persecutions around the world. There's the atheistic regimes, um, um, and 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 there's also what the 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 extreme Islamic states. What is well, that? That is, that is really the primary driver of of violent anti-Christian persecution in the world today. If you look at Open Doors, which is a a Christian uh, it monitors Christian persecution around the world, and they publish every year the World Watch List, uh, which is a list of the 50 countries where it's most dangerous to be a Christian. And every year, and this year was no was no different when that list came out in January. Of the top 10 countries where it's most dangerous to be a Christian, nine are Muslim majority Christian uh, Muslim majority countries, and that's just you know statistical fact that you know a lot of these countries that are still Islamic republics, you know we don't think of. Afghanistan, but Afghanistan's real title as a nation is the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. Mm. There's the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. All these are actual conf confessional states. Uh, we don't have very many of those left in the Christian world. Um, England is still nominally uh, a confessional state, but we do have many, many in the Islamic world. And in those countries where you have a strong Islamic uh, majority, there's a lot of extremism. And there's a lot of very, very serious persecution, the hardest of which falls on anyone. Uh, alas, if this happens, you convert from Islam to Christianity. Uh, that's something that you are, you're an op it's open season. Uh, that's something where no one will even get in trouble if, for killing you if you are a convert from Islam to Christians. But even Christians who've always been Christians in those countries live as second class citizens. So that's, a, that's another really, really serious one. I mean, that, you look- mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'm sorry at the country where it's most most dangerous where you're most likely to die this year if you live in this country if you're a christian is nigeria and nigeria is only slightly more muslim it's about 51 52 percent muslim but it's so radicalized and and they basically have the attitude that the only good nigerian is a muslim nigerian and and everyone else really has no right to be there wasn't that true of and india so too right they, in india I, I think your book says that if you're in, if you're, if, is it India? If you don't, if you're Indian, and you're not yes. Hindu. You're not Indian. You yeah, know, and, but, exactly. But you know, right. go back to the genesis of of, of the, the Muslim religion. It was like, you know, we will tolerate all faiths. Uh, we're going to conquer you, take over you, uh, but you can practice your faith as long as you pay a really extreme tax, and you won't be able to buy or sell. You won't be able to own land. <laughs> that's right. not tolerance. That's that's domination. And so, um, and so the so we the, so the atheist regimes the. Uh, the uh, extreme Islamic republics, where there isn't a separation of church and state, uh, and uh, and uh, and then the, some in the Hindu, uh, some of the Hindu environments too, right? Absolutely. And then the other one that we've been alluding to, you and I both, I think, is this this radicalized form of secularism that we're seeing uh, taking the upper hand in the West, where it's it's uh, separating itself very, very quickly from any uh, any Christianity in its past and its tradition, and it's becoming more virulently anti-Christian. And they're doing something that in the history of all persecutions, and this, if you talk about Jews during the Second World War, if you talk about Christians of the first centuries, there's always a common pattern, which is you have to demonize the one you want to persecute. You have to make it look like you are doing a good thing by harassing, by use of violence, by killing. It has to be you're liberating. You know, an invader is never an invader. You're always a liberator. Right, right. And in, and in the case of persecutors, they have to show that it's the Christians who are bigots. It's the Christians who are intolerant. It's the Christians right. who are backwards. It's, it's the Christians. Well, we have to take a break. But you're right. It's the Christians that must be. We, we, have, we, we need to be tolerant, so we need to make the Christians shut up. We have to be intolerant with them. We'll be right back with more with our guest, Dr. Thomas Williams. We're talking about his book, The Coming Christian Persecution. We'll be right back. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up at the Bishop Markham Ranch in Goldendale, Washington. Fisher Man. The Columbia River Bar, where the mighty Columbia meets the massive Pacific, is no place for wimps to work. There are hundreds of sobering reasons. Over 200 shipwrecks and many more boats met their demise. As to why this boiling cauldron of water is rightly called the Graveyard of the Pacific. 
My great-grandfather, a stalwart, virtuous man and lay preacher, was one of the pioneering fishermen who came to Owaka, Washington, to strike it rich on salmon in the 1870s, a time when ships were made of wood and men of iron. My ancestors faced this very water in 30-foot sailboats, not unlike those on the Sea of Galilee. Give some understanding as to why Jesus chose commercial fishermen as four of the Twelve Apostles. Hardy souls, these men, men of perseverance, willing to take a risk to face death and then go at it again. As you may recall, Jesus called James and John the sons of thunder. Having worked on fishing boats, I know a little something about fishermen who thunder. Colorful, raw language, raw emotion, and the sheer force of will. Suffering persecution and the threat of death, those boys stood up for what was right, pushing through the storms of life. It's time for men of the church to heed the call to be men of virtue and perseverance for the sake of righteousness, ever pressing upstream with God's truth as a flow of culture pushes back against what is right, true, just, and good. Be a fisherman. Get on board and grab an oar. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everyone to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We especially uh, today want to invite the men to join Bear's Man Cave and our School of Manliness. Uh, we The Man Cave is our own non-Facebook community on our site where the men... Uh, challenge each other encourage each other more than anything you kind of find when we when the company of these other men that we're kind of like all bozos on the same bus you know we all got the same problems we get real with each other and we encourage each other it's kind of like the cave of Adullam where uh king david was hiding out from saul and all the misfits kind of showed up joined him you know the people running from the law or I always like to say, or maybe from their mother-in-law or, or owed money. And then God used those men. Uh, the men formed each other, and God formed them into the mighty men of valor. So come and join the man cave at deepadventure.com. And then we go through a – we have Zoom meetups once a, once a month. And then we go through a whole three-year curriculum together, 36 different months of lessons with audio and video and written content. Uh, I think this, this, this month's um, lesson is on that a man needs to be dangerous. So we're, we're talking together about that. And so, uh, and so we, we encourage you to go there and become part of what we're doing and then help you yourself start your own men's group and things like that. So go to thedeepadventure.com. Become part of the Man Cave. We're talking with Dr. Thomas Williams, his book, The Coming Christian Persecution, uh, Why Things Are Getting Worse and How to Prepare for What Is to Come. What is the image behind these letters? I can't quite pick it out on your cover of your book. I should show everyone. That that is a target. That's a uh, crosshairs. Oh, that's the crosshairs. Oh, oh, I see that. Oh, okay, that's not good. <laughs> okay, no, it's it's not good. <laughs> so and, what? And actually, that's what we do see uh, when we see Christians persecuted around the world. It's not by accident. It, it's targeted. Uh, this is not just. 
they happen to be there and it, it's they're sought out. Um, going back to the case of Nigeria, you have entire villages burned. Uh, you have Christians slaughtered with machetes and with at gunpoint when they're known to be Christian villages. You know, there was uh, a time in the world. Start- there was a time in the world of there was a time of persecution back in the early church, but that doesn't happen anymore. But the reality is there's more pers- more more uh, martyrs today than ever in history. Wouldn't you, would you say that's close to being well, that's, true? Well, that is without a doubt factually true. And, you know, but it's, it's exactly what you just said right now that was my prime motivation in writing the book is that face to face with this reality, there's another reality, which is how the widespread ignorance about the, the magnitude of the problem and the, and the fact that people are uninformed. And they're uninformed not because of ill will, but because mainstream media simply will not tell anyone about this. It is it is the best kept secret, if you will, um, that there are 360 million Christians around the world who live in daily fear for their lives. They live under serious to extreme persecution, whether it's state run or by some of these other uh, organizations or whatever, whatever the drivers happen to be. But that's that, how many Christians But live. that's never going to happen here. I mean, I can't imagine them ever barring churches not allowing us to go into church and that would never happen here you know not no, allowing never. us to 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 have holy water that would never happen here but we've seen how easily we slipped into it and let it happen and yeah uh, that that actually was one of the things that scared me most about the pandemic and that, obviously that's what you're alluding to is yes. how how easily we gave up our civil liberties and how easily we gave up our adherence to to core uh beliefs and practices of our faith i mean do you really believe that that, that Purell is is going to do more for you than holy water? No, but you I mean, know the good news is the essential stuff like liquor stores, things like that <laughs> were left open. You know, uh, yeah, no, but we, but 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 it's on us because how easily. I mean, I I understand we were all confused at the time, but we stood out in front of our church every morning and prayed the rosary that the doors would open again. And it's right, it's right here, right next door to our our house. But how easily. We acquiesced. What what do we need to be aware of, and what and you talk about how do we prepare for what is to come? How do we, I mean, how do, I, yeah. I think you know? I think there are a series bear of of tried and true Christian Catholic virtues that we need to rediscover and reimplement and we infuse need, into our define, children. Exactly, we need to 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 find those. We need to embrace them. We need to practice them, and we need to pass them on to our children. And number one is a great manly virtue. It's called courage, fortitude. One of the four cardinal virtues, one that we is all but forgotten in, in today's world, but we need to stand firm. We need to, you know, Jesus said, pray to be able to have the, 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 the strength to stand firm and to endure whatever comes. That is such a great challenge for Christians and especially Christian men to be able to stand firm no matter what comes. And you mentioned examples before of discrimination, of, of being you know, treated as kind of a second class person, not being promoted. There are many ways that we experience this cross of persecution in our lives, depending on where, what our, what our you know, immediate vicinity looks like, uh, but it's real. It's something real and we need to embrace it. And as you said before, that beautiful example of Mark, uh, but this is from the Acts of the Apostles, right? The apostles come back after being flogged and they rejoiced and having been found worthy to they suffer act, they, something and I, for the name. And I think they really did rejoice. I think that the Holy Spirit infused them with that, that peace that comes beyond understanding and with that joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, Jesus said, uh, he gave us uh, the Beatitudes and things, but there was one thing he told us to get really happy about. Count it all, you know, what was it again? In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. What a joy it is, that moment of boldness when you step up and step out. And not being obnoxious and not being presumptuous, but on the, by the nudging of the Holy Spirit, you stand up and suddenly things happen. You, you, you sense kind of wing, wind beneath your wings and, and the Lord is carrying you and the Lord, the Lord is, is leading you. When you, when you, you know, on the, on the streets here in Waikiki, we have so many people. Lately, um, well, not lately, over the last 20 years, cities city send their... their not they're homeless, but kind of like they're thugs to us. They're homeless thugs. Mm. And we can't send them back. The ACLU won't let us send them back. And so we do get a criminal element out here. Uh, uh, not so much now. They're beginning to, to deal with it. But, uh, you know, I, so many they would accost people or, or a young woman or something. And, and we're, we, you're standing someplace and someone's using the foulest language. 
Uh, what can you do about that? I just, I just let them know, you know, I know you're a better man than that. There's, there's a lady present. Can you change your language? Yeah. Over someone uses Christ's name in vain. I just always say the words. You know, I was in a, in a plane the other day, and this irate woman just kept using his name in vain to her child behind me, uh, who she was angry with. And I just, every time she said it, I just said the only name by which men can be saved. It's a little yeah. thing, but, but we can't just let that, you know, it's such a small thing. But we just can't let those small things go. Well, how else can we prepare for this, for, this, uh, for this thing that's coming at us? Well, an obvious one, but it's always important to say the obvious is, is prayer. Uh, you know, Jesus said, watch and pray that you may not fall into temptation. What is the greatest temptation if not to give in when things get really, really tough? Uh, you know, you mentioned before, John was the only apostle under the cross. Uh, someone, you know, the, the joke, uh, the joke is that the only real example of collegiality among the apostles in the entire Gospels is they all ran away. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> That's sad. That's so you know, sad. In the, Garden, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is arrested, they all ran away. And this is, it's tough, you know, and, yeah. and watch and pray. And we pray for ourselves, but we also have a duty to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters. That's part of the way we show solidarity with them is by praying for them that they will have the strength, that they will be able to endure that affliction that they have suffered, that maybe I don't have to today, but they do. Uh, so I think that is, that is really, really important. Uh, I think another one is memory. You know, the reason we, we honor the martyrs, the reason that in all our churches we have relics of the martyrs, and we, because we have yeah. to remember the heroes that have gone before us, those great, you know, heaven's athletes they've been called, those who have been really willing to stand up and show us what it looks like to be a serious Christian, a faithful Christian, one who is willing to follow Jesus anywhere, up to the point of shedding one's blood. <coughs> Excuse me, those, those are our heroes, and we need to remember, we need to look back. And, and teach our children. Our, I'm and sorry. teach our children. Yeah. yeah. We need to spend time teaching our children, and we need to lead by example. We, need, When our children get up in, in the morning early, maybe one of them gets up a little bit early, you know, having a tough time sleeping, do they see their dad maybe at that chair they always know he prays at? You know, do, they, do, they, do, do we lead him? Do we bring him to Mass? Do we, do we lead, you know, do we lead by example? You know, one of the, we're talking with Dr. Thomas Williams. <laughs> EWC and always tells me, remember to say their names again and again, and I always get carried away. Um, the Coming Christian Persecution is a book by Crisis Publishing, which is part of the Sophia Publishers, my, my publisher, why things are getting worse and how to pre prepare for what is to come. Dr. Williams, where can people find the book and where can they find you? Other than this well, Rome. They can, yeah, <laughs> they, <laughs> they can find the book on Sophia Institute Press. That's the best place to find it. And then you find all the other great books by Sophia, including your own. Mm. Uh, they can also find it on Amazon, of course. And uh, I have a website, www.thomasdwilliams.com or on Twitter at, at tdwilliamsrome. I'm so jealous of that Twitter name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Bear Wozniak, and the Bear Wozniak Adventure will be right back. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. 
Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha this is the bear wasnick adventure we want to invite you to go to our youtube channel and become a member there uh, there now it's not just that you can subscribe or like you can actually become a member and help us with our ministry. And there you will see all of our radio shows. We have actually over 400 radio shows, YouTube versions of our radio show there. This radio show will be posted there um, actually even before it airs. So if you're a member, you get it early. And, uh, and we have uh, about 250 uh, 15-minute teachings from the catechism. I'm down, usually down by the beach somewhere early in the morning, and I I've, and I've go through the entire catechism. Just love the catechism. Uh, you can also find... Uh, uh, some of Cindy's are my, my adventures in the sun uh, videos that we do, and uh, also uh, Long Ride Home is available uh, there or on uh, Prime Video. If you you know you can watch it on EWTN, but right now there's 12 new episodes that are being released uh, to YouTube and EWTN that are not even aired by I mean e EWTN and Prime Video that not haven't even been aired yet by EWTN, so you can be the first to watch those shows too. So go to YouTube, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. Please become a member. We we appreciate you if you for you to do that. Uh, right now we have uh, with us as a guest Dr. Thomas Williams and his book, The Coming Christian Persecution, Why Things Are Getting Worse and How to Prepare, prepare for What Is to Come. Dr. Williams, you were saying, he's in Rome, by the way, so it's, it's always, it's okay to be a little jealous, you know, just be happy. S so says just, the man on Waikiki Beach, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, if you could just see how beautiful it is, right? I'm looking out. But you know, today I, I, I had to finish my newest book, Twelve Rules for Manliness: Where Have All the Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? I just finished it just moments ago, and I've been just buried in the final edits from the editor. You know how that goes. And I've been looking at Perfect Surf. Okay, now that I'm just finished it, I look out; it's flat. So I don't know what to, what I'll do. <laughs> Maybe go golfing. Who knows? But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little break here uh, today uh, after we get our our, sh our show done. But the the book, The Coming Christi per Christian Persecution. You know, right now that persecution, someone's living with it right now. More than one person may be facing death uh, or other types of persecution. You you said that one of the things we could do is pray. That's the most important of all, because isn't this a spiritual battle, first and foremost? Isn't it because, yeah. not that Islam hates us or atheism hates us, but Satan hates us? You know, that is honestly the most important point of this whole, this whole discussion, in the sense that, yeah, we're participating in something much bigger than ourselves, and that, you know, the virulence of the hatred against Christ and his church, that doesn't come from human beings who just find Christians intolerable or unpleasant, whatever it might be. It comes, as you say, from the father of lies and the one, the envy of the devil. That is how death and sin entered the world. And that is what we are facing. It is a spiritual battle, but we are in the midst of it at the same time during our sojourn here on earth. And we participate. We suffer with it as well. But we have to fight it. Uh, you know, it's Another thing we really have to do is is be up in the front lines fighting for religious liberty. And we're not asking for privileges. We're not asking for special treatment. But we do want every human being on the planet to be able to worship God and practice faith in private and in public. This is part of our our religion is not a private religion. It's not something that we that we practice only behind closed doors. It's something that we live out and that we believe that every human being has the right to live out. And that's something you know, that we really need, or that's under attack in the West right now. It's being first diminished to one right among many instead of America's first right, which it was always considered. 
Uh, and then even something less than that, when, when two rights butt heads, it's like, well, you're just being stubborn, you're being bigoted, you're using this as an excuse to discriminate, which obviously is not the truth and it's not the way we see it, but this is the way it's often now being framed. You know, think about what just happened uh, just before Easter. Um, the priests that were uh, uh, serving there, I think it was at Walter Reed, the Veterans Hospital, were kicked out. Um, and they, oh, that don't worry, we, we hired a, another company. Uh, uh, you know, probably I can just see secular feel good, you know, psychologists and, and they're messing with men that are men and women that are suffering from PTSD. Many are suicidal. They need to hear the good news and they need to receive the sacraments. You know, during during the <clears throat> the COVID thing, people go, well, you know, you can worship God right out there in the ocean. Why don't why do you have to have a church? Well, because this is where I receive the sacraments. The Catholic Church is probably the only is the only faith that would say that. Right. You know, we want to we, right. we need we want to receive the Eucharist. We want to celebrate the Mass. We want to be able to go to confession. Uh, and so, we, so it is a spiritual battle. You know, uh, do you do you like Warren Carroll? Do you know who Warren Carroll is? The great uh, historical. Uh, I think he founded Christendom College. You know exactly. I yep. love. I think his books yep. are right, like right there, somewhere up there. Anyway, <sighs> I love his history, and somewhere in there, I'm so, you know, I underline every single book that I read. I'm so bad. I shouldn't do that. But in there somewhere, and I lost track. I didn't grab it. I didn't record exactly where it is. And there's volumes here, and I've tried to find it. But there was a Spanish general, uh, the story of him when he fought against the, the Islam, when they took, uh, swept into the Iberian Peninsula. And he battled and battled and gradually went further back up into the mountains and fought. But they say he was just covered with scars, but only on the front. In other words, mm -hmm. he never ran. He, he was always yeah. on the attack. And when you look at the, the spiritual armor uh, in Ephesians, it's all offensive armor or it's on the front. There, nothing is mentioned on the back <laughs> of people. Right. And when Jesus said uh, that the gates of hell will not prevail against you, it isn't like gates attack people. You know, we're to be on the attack. And people will tell me, when you're on a long ride home, do you ever feel like you're under spiritual attack? And I go, no, we're not under attack. We're on the attack. We're on the offensive. And and uh, and we're provoking the enemy, and, and, and he's resisting. But we need to not think of ourselves as being in some defensive posture. You know, the way you're saying with in our prayer and in our actions, we need to not just stand our ground. We need to take ground. Absolutely. This is... It, it, Make disciples of all nations is not about going and hiding out and trying to wait for the enemy to pass. It's about getting out there, knowing you're going to face very serious confrontation and loving it, embracing it. Just say, this is what it means to be Christian. And whether we live long lives or short lives, the important thing are, is to live good and heroic lives and to do the, live out that mission uh, in the days that God gives us and to live it out as truly as we can. And, and that is... That is how you meet the persecution. You know, I think the scariest thing for a Christian is not to feel the cross in your life, not Amen. to feel that persecution. Yeah, you, wow. you have to wonder and say, what am I doing wrong that I don't that I don't feel this? I don't identify with Christ in His cross. If that's not there, something's wrong. Wow, that is that is really heavy. I, I remember when I was young, going to college, they would say, "Give your life to the Lord." You know, and God's got a happy plan for your life. You know, but and and I and I've had the occasion to. To lead, I uh, can't help myself to lead people to Christ. You know, just kind of—I don't mean I'm obnoxious, but I, I just would think everyone would want to know the good news. But uh, when I used to lead people to Christ, I would think this is going to be really uh, God will set things in order in their life, and He does that, and their life's just going to be great. But now I think of uh, give your life to the Lord and be prepared. You, you, it's sometime within your lifetime, you may be asked to, you may be martyred. I, I get that real sense that that uh it's a real serious thing now when you when you when you die to die to self and live for christ that it may actually be that physical reality Come yeah on. i mean jesus said to the apostles all of you who have left houses wives children lands for my sake and say we'll have all this all this and persecution besides <laughs> he said that this is part of what's coming uh because the disciple is always like his master mm -hmm. and if they hated me they will hate you too you know, if you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. But since my choice withdrew you from the world, the world hates you. And you know, the so, thing is, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. You no, know, no, I'm just, uh, this is all promised. We know it's coming. We shouldn't be surprised when, when persecution knocks on our door because that is what it means to be a disciple. And my sense is that the younger generation is saying, yes, I want something real. I want something worth, not worth fighting for, something, I'm, I, I would, something worth dying for. 
You know, something that I, 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 I give me the hard facts. Give me the hard truth. Let me know. Let me know uh, Jesus and the gospel as it really is. I need something gritty to get traction in my life. Uh, to 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 believe to really believe in the Lord and to and to move and to move in the Lord. You have one minute to give us what your 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 final thoughts would be before we have to before I get to go surfing. <laughs> well, I know I I think that this is a moment for Christians to stand up proudly to know that that God is active in this moment that the Holy Spirit is moving and I think that when there is more persecution when there's more suffering it's because the Holy Spirit is particularly active in the mm. church. And we've been called for this moment in history and to stand up. This is the only moment we've got. Uh, and, and we have to embrace it together to stand shoulder to shoulder with one another and pick up that cross. You know, I think you're right. During, I would, my last interview was with an exorcist, or, or we were talking about uh, the exorcist, uh, Father um, Gabriel Amorth. And in, in, in exorcism, when the name of Jesus is called, that's when the enemy screams out. That's when there's a reaction from, you know, the, the demon within that person. That's what's happening in the world today. You know, he's on the run. He knows his days are, are numbered. And so, and the good news is we know how, we, we've read the end of the Bible. And, and he's called the fleeing dragon. He's called the great dragon, but the Bible calls him the fleeing dragon. He's on the run. He may sweep with his tail, but in the end, uh, it, at the cross, Jesus won that victory for us. We're talking with Dr. Thomas Williams, his book, The Coming Christian Persecution. You can find it at Sophia. You can find it at Amazon. And Dr. Williams, where can they find you? Uh, ThomasDWilliams.com is probably the easiest way, or if on Twitter, at TDWilliamsRome. I know. He keeps out rubbing it in that he lives in Rome. Uh, <laughs> So good to be with you, and thank you all for joining us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I have to do the engineering here myself now because my son went to a doctor's appointment in the middle of this. Can you? Do you know how to turn off uh, Zoom? Uh, I know how to do it on my own computer. Yeah, why don't you do that because I just dropped my mouse too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I will. Bear, thanks so much. I think this was great, and I really appreciate it. You're very generous with your time. Uh, oh, man. I, it's, uh, it's, it's a privilege to know men like you. And we'll be praying well, for you. Likewise. Next time you walk along the Tiber, say just one Hail Mary for us. <laughs> I, I, will, I will gladly do that. That I can gladly. overcome the sin of jealousy. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay, God, God bless you, Okay. Bear. God bless All you, right. too. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.